Hello Libra. Welcome to the channel. This is Astointia here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading. And I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you are connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So please keep in mind that the way I read and this particular reading, um, I am not channeling any spirit guides, positive or negative. There's no orbs in my room. Um, they wouldn't be. So just wanted to mention that the only time I do uh, call upon any beings, that is the celestial beings, Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, at the end of this reading to provide you with some advice uh, that they feel is necessary to give. So I am just channeling through my higher self and that is possible. These are very, very different cards. I don't think I've ever had this kind of combination before. Oh, it's a very strange kind of combination. Now, these feelings and emotions are not necessarily yours. This is actually your person of interest. But because of the type of energy I'm seeing here, there's a lot of sadness. Um, and there's a couple other cards here, like wanting to have a second chance, becoming a bit wiser and making a decision plus deceit. Um, this person can also be potentially going through this. You both, I mean, not this person, but you uh, could be going through this as well. So when I'm going to read this, um, feel free to apply that to yourself as well. We do, we do mirror the other person. We pick up on their energy as well. That's very natural. So it is not uncommon uh, if this is the case, that you feel like this is your own energy as well. So here we have Wisdom, followed by Death and Rebirth. Then we have Crossroads. Then we have here Wild Woman, followed by Laughter, Creativity, Ecstasy, Grief. And then we have Opening, under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Libra, I have learned my lesson. I'm a bit wiser now. I am no longer the same person that you once knew me as. I have changed. I have evolved. But you wouldn't know that. Because you and I are not in talking terms. We are not on talking terms, we are not conversing as we should be, as we used to. Too many things have happened and I realize that you're not that type of person, the type of person that I thought you was. I thought you were somebody else but it turns out you were completely different. The world and you opened my eyes you showed me that things were different. You showed me that you were different. And now I look at the entire situation with a different lens. I'm more patient now too. I'm not as irritable as I used to be. I feel a little bit in Zen mode actually. And because of this, I realize now that the past was very rough and rude and mean. The road was never clear. But now I want that to change. Now I feel that in this connection there is this wonderful opportunity to have a second chance because I'm wiser. And now I am at a crossroads because I know that we can have a better future. 
I am at a crossroads and I now think, what choice, what decision should I make? How should I make this? When should I make this? Should I make this at all? I question myself because I know that I have to make a decision, but I just haven't made one yet. And I understand that in this connection there has been deceit, there's been lies. I have told you and spoken paragraphs and paragraphs, but I've left out key pieces of information. What you don't know, what you don't know won't hurt you. Does that mean that I lied to you by not giving you the full story? By taking out pieces, was I being a deceptive kind of person? Sneaky. I know I was being sneaky, because I was. I just didn't tell you the full truth. I understand that you have always considered me like a friend, a good friend. And I consider you a beautiful and best friend. You are amazing. You know what makes my heart happy. You know what makes me laugh. You know what makes me tick. You know so much about me. And it's amazing that you know this much. I do feel that I want to finally create something in this lifetime. I want to create something with you, something that will be long-lasting for the world to see. And why is that? Because there's something about you that makes me feel eternally blissful. On the inside, my soul feels happy. There's this charm that you have, this beauty, this charisma, this talent. You make it all go away, all the pain. With you, everything seems fresh, clean, innocent, new. And this is why it's just so alluring, knowing that that could all be mine. But for now, Libra, I grieve. Everything that has happened up until this point, I feel that I have screwed up. And now I feel as if I've lost you forever. There is this desire, there is this understanding that this entire time I had you and now I'm losing you. And I see you fading. There is sadness and there is melancholy. I feel regret, remorse. There is this feeling of being rejected now. Overall, I feel the need now to open up to you and to talk to you about what's going on on the inside of my heart. There's so many things that have happened. And I realize now that it's important for me to open up to you. I do not want to stay closed. What's in my heart, I want it out in the open. I want to reveal to you what it is that I feel. Because I feel it's important that you also know what's inside of my heart. How do I feel? I feel that it's important that you should know. All right, there you have it. It's a very uh, self, it's like a self-assessment. This person has assessed and done things in their life, focusing on themselves, which is good. They are now at that point where they, they know themselves, which is great. They know themselves. And now they're just trying to get into that type of an environment where they can finally reach out to you and be with you. So this is a long story. This is actually, um, so you guys have had history. There was separation. There was sadness. This person started to think a lot. And now finally when they're starting to make sense of all the problems in their life, now they realize that they want you back. 
Um, it might not be too late. That's okay. But I do see that this person is in that mindset now where they're no longer like indecisive. They know that you are what they want. They just don't know how to do it right now because of certain things that have happened in this connection. There's like a lack of trust, a lack of faith. And for that reason, they hesitate. All right. So let's have a look at the Lover's Path Tarot. So I usually look at that particular deck to see what it is. And I read the reversal to see what it is that happened in this connection in the first place. Something that may have brought down um, this connection. Okay. Wow. One card fell right out. Seven of stabs. Then we have here the ten of coins. So this could be one of the many reasons why things started to go downhill in this connection between the both of you. Let's have a look at the seven of stabs. So this does talk about how at some point in time this person started to feel very overwhelmed and they were being their own worst enemy. What they were doing was creating problems to distract themselves from what was really going on. They were being defensive, combative, and there was a lot of struggle. They were dealing with difficult people or a difficult situation. And even between the both of you, they were feeling that you were a difficult person and that your and this person's um, intentions were very much opposed. Unfortunately, it does show here that they may have let other people's problems become their own problems. That's uh, interference, but sometimes that can also be them taking it on themselves. Either way, this card does talk about feeling very overwhelmed and how this person had become their own worst enemy. They were creating problems from distracting what was really going on. So they were not really paying attention to what was going on that was um, at that point in time. Like, you know, something's imminent. There's, there's something happening at that moment and that person would not concentrate on that particular problem. Instead, they would pretend like it doesn't exist and they would be focusing on something completely unrelated and you would just wonder, why is this important? Why are we having this conversation? Some of you might have felt that. Now, we also have here the Ten of Coins. The Ten of Coins here does talk about mm -hmm, how there was discontentment at home or with family life, family relationships. Elusive success on the material plane. This person does feel that there was problems related to people, problems related to family. There was most likely here negative kind of experience. There's a negative kind of experience when it comes to family. And because of that, this person started to hesitate. They started to become a bit defensive, a bit combative. They really distanced themselves because they thought if this happens at home, this is going to happen with me in the future too. They just don't know any better, unfortunately. This is, this is the type of environment that they're in. And they thought that if this happened with them and the scenarios that they come up with in their mind and whatever they're living, they thought that this would also happen with you. But now remember, the first card was the strongest. You had wisdom, right? So wisdom means that this person is no longer thinking in the same way. They are now wiser. So this is all in the past. This person's gone way beyond that now. That's good. That's very good. All right, let's have a look. Let's have a look at what hmm, is in these cards. Oh my gosh, love it, love it. Knight of Cups, beautiful card. So these are any actions, any intentions that this person may have towards you in the coming days or months. So we have here the Three of Pentacles, the Four of Cups. 
We have the Six of Wands. Mm-hmm. Two of Pentacles under the bottom of the deck. Not bad. We could have had a better reading, but one of the cards is absolutely beautiful. Both of them, actually. Um, Knight of Cups, and then we have the Six of Wands. This talks about a return from the past, somebody who you loved. Somebody who you have a romantic connection with that was in your past, that was gone for a while, is going to be returning, Libra. Yes. So we have here the Knight of Cups. This person will be returning in a very soft, gentle kind of manner. They are... Um, they're, they're coming back not in a rush. They don't want to rush things because they feel that it'll be... They want things to happen naturally and gradually. So what's what I like about this is that they're very soft and gentle about it. They're going to approach you in a very soft and gentle way. They're not aggressive. They're not rough. They're not mean. Um, it's going to be a very gentle kind of, um, I guess you can say, approach from this particular individual. We also have here the Three of Pentacles. Now this does talk about... Some of you might have actually worked with this person. Maybe you still do. Um, whatever the case is, they do feel and they realize that they are falling in love with you. And just the fact that you have the Knight of Cups coming back into your life. I mean, this person is in love. Um, if you don't actually work with this person, it does not matter. This could also be interpreted as somebody who knows um, how to manifest and how to do certain things um, to bring the relationship together so there may be more than two people in this connection however this person wants to be an extreme special person uh, where they can manifest and they can construct and they can build this relationship with this person so there may there could be possibly three people but this person wants to just focus on you now why is that because of the next card the four of cups they are completely completely depressed and there's levels of depression that are different we know that um, but this person's very sad because they feel like they've missed an opportunity they feel like an opportunity was given they didn't take it for um, they didn't they took it sorry for granted they didn't take advantage of it they're feeling left out and they feel they they're not seeing the things that are in front of them the opportunities that are still there instead they're dwelling on the past and unfortunately, that does not help with progression. But eventually, I do see here, this person will recover from the type of feelings and emotions that they're suffering from. And what clarifies all of that is the next card, the Six of Wands. So, yes, this person had problems in the past. There was distance. However, what we see here now is that this person is going to, and they are willing to, and they want to, reach out and come back into your life in a very victorious kind of manner. Because they felt that they had lost you. But now, when they want, when, when they want to come back into your life, they're going to try to be that type of person who can win your heart. Victory. They want victory. Now, under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme we have here is the Two of Pentacles. Now, typically, the Two of Pentacles does talk about juggling, talks about uh, trying to create a better balance. But in this connection, I also see that the balance may be, for several per like reasons, um, this person might not have time, energy, effort to give to you because maybe they're working somewhere else. Maybe they're taking care of a loved one who's sick. There's a variety of reasons why people do what they do. So for this reason, not everybody will want to dedicate their time to you because they have no time. People usually want to just dedicate a whole bunch of time to the person that they love, 100%. But if they're only going to give you a small portion, 30%, for example, then they feel themselves that, you know what, it's not worth it. Because it's not fair to you. This is talking about somebody who's eventually, they could be unreliable. That, you know, even though we know each other, etc., etc., I promised you this, but then I didn't give this to you. I didn't promise on, I, I, I broke my promise. 
um, certain things like that. And this happens because somebody's not able to give you that time, energy, and effort that you deserve because they are overwhelmed already. They've taken on too much for now. Eventually, when one or two of those tasks or responsibilities has faded, then they can take on this new challenge, which would be yourself. Um, for them, it's a challenge because they want to come back into your life. And that's the thing. Like already being in your life is easy, but then when somebody has extinguished that fire and when that flame is gone, reigniting it is very, very difficult. That's not easy. This person is going to try. They're going to try their best. All right. Let's have a look. Let's see what the angels have to say about this. All right, we have here, don't stop. So don't stop giving and receiving love. That's very good. Um, some of you may have been discouraged to the point where you just kind of wanted to give up. So these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. Okay. Wow. Wow. You have two cards here that are very important that talk about people, help from people. You got both cards in this deck. There's only two. You got both cards here. So that's pretty amazing. This definitely talks about you consulting and talking to people about this connection. Oh my goodness. Then you have this gorgeous card, Romance. This is a spiritually based connection for sure. Then we have here also, there's something better. So here... The first card is the strongest. We have here, don't stop. Now, when I interpret this card, I have seen it many times where I have sensed that it's important for you not to stop that positive flow of energy. So don't stop giving. Don't stop receiving love. Because the more open you are, the more things will come to you. If you're closed, the universe and energies will know that they can't approach you. They are saying here, if you believe, then things will also turn out right for you because you will be manifesting and sending that positive vibration out into the universe and it will attract positive energy. We also have here, in the near future. So in the near future, there will be success. There's some type of good news that's going to occur. I'm very happy to hear this. And it'll, it'll happen in the near future. It could be, maybe in the far future, but since it says near, let's just stick to that. Now, this is interesting. You have here, ask for help from others, and then you have helpful people. So this is really good. This is good that it shows that you have um, a network of friends or a network of people who actually care about you. They actually want to help you and make sure that you are healthy and happy and that you know um, what it is that you're getting into. So talk to a doctor, a therapist, a friend, a best friend, um, somebody who you trust, a family member, about whatever is bothering you in this connection. Talk to somebody who has been there, done that. They have experience in relationships. They know what to, um, you know, how to view the relationship Hopefully, if they had a successful relationship, they can give you that successful, happy, good advice. Because um, if you go to miserable people, they will give you miserable answers. That happens all the time. A person gets heartbroken, they get jaded. All of a sudden, all men or all women are terrible creatures. I hate men. I hate women. Don't go to those type of people. Those type of people are not the type of people that are going to be giving you advice because that's bias. 
That is them judging based on their own life and their own problems. What they need to do is talk to somebody else and get over that. Because people go through a lot of crazy stuff in life, right? There's many terrible things that happen. It's unforgivable. But it doesn't mean that an entire gender is plagued with that same, that same tainted reputation. You don't do that. That's not fair. So be very careful who you trust. Be very careful who you tell your story to. Ultimately, you're supposed to have a couple of people in your life. They're going to be very helpful. And they will genuinely, with, the, you know, with their heart, they will try to be there for you and they're going to try to help you. And I see here with the second card, helpful people. Some of you don't even know that you have a certain type of people. It could be your cousins. It could be you know, your friend. Um, you don't know that you have certain people in your life who actually genuinely care about you. But that only happens if you decide to talk, if you decide to approach. The reason also why is because you will be gaining new information from other people and you'll get a better perspective. So you'll become wiser, even though you're already wise. You don't have to depend on somebody else's, um, oh, sorry, you don't actually have to depend on your own wisdom reaching that point. Somebody else might already have that wisdom and just share it with you. So do talk to people. Do read resources online. Go to YouTube. Learn more about relationships, about communication, about red flags. Read books on this kind of topic. Those are also created by helpful people, just to let you know. Helpful people have created those type of resources. So it's not necessarily that you face-to-face -face speak to somebody. It doesn't have to be. You could simply just try to learn what have you done in this connection? How could you fix it? And why is this person behaving this way? Sometimes you can get those answers. Now here we also have romance. So this is simply just indicating that in this connection, yes, it is a spiritually based connection. And the one thing about this card is that it is definitely indicating a soulmate, twin flame, or karmic partner relationship. However, Libra, from what I've seen in all of my readings, it's not necessary that everybody gets together that has a soulmate connection or a twin flame connection, even a karmic partner connection. Sometimes it just doesn't work out because we're only here on planet Earth as souls within the body that has a spirit. We are here um, as two separate beings, but we're here to learn a lesson. We're here to teach people about love. So this is something I just wanted to mention that there is an actual difference here when you, when you think about it. There is a difference between this type of a mindset versus actual practical um, emotionally and spiritually, the both of you are great. Physically, however, there is probably an issue here that's occurring. And we also have here, there's something better. Now, I have seen with this card, there's something better actually does mean to expect the unexpected because something that you did not expect to happen is going to happen and it's going to make your heart very happy. So there's something better than the situation. It could even be there's something better than this person. It could be. I've seen that happen too. My dear Libra, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situation. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this resonated with you. And I also wanted to just quickly announce that currently I'm still taking on love readings. The love readings I have right now that are available are only a written report, but it does provide you with the most amount of clarity possible. And I have their um, different sections. So one of the sections, for example, in the beginning, I, um, I look into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with, just like when I do here. And afterwards, I look at the the challenges, any type of obstacles or concerns or issues that are causing the problem between the both of you, uh, what that person views. So according to that, then you'd be able to make um, or take any action according to those type of feelings and emotions. Then I also have a section there where I talk about any type of hidden feelings and emotions that this person has, that they're, they're hidden, like they're just not sharing it with you. 
So um, when you are able to assess all of that, I have the rest of the reading of the self-assessment. So you question yourself and then you, you know, you see, you know, do you want to be with this person? Do you want to move on from this person? Do you want to wait for this person? It'll give you a better understanding of where you stand so that you can actually make a decision and not waste time. Time is important, right? Memories, building memories is important. And that's your reading, Libra. Um, before you place an order, please read the description so that you feel that that is exactly, and you know that that is exactly what you want. Um, it is, I have detailed information on it, so it would be um, helpful. And um, the cards that I've interpreted, it's all my um, interpretation. They are, if not longer than how I um, speak um, in these readings online. But um, it will prove uh, helpful and useful. So I have gotten good feedback from a lot of people. So I'm really happy that um, it's helping a lot of people. And sometimes just to give, you know, yourself a little bit of reassurance. You know, where do I stand? What is this person feeling for me? Um, I've tried to create this method so that I can help the most amount of people as I can. All right then. Libra, you take care. Stay safe. And I will see you guys again. Bye now.